I'm Tim Laird with Kevin Harnett inside the Secrets of Bluegrass Chef Studios. I'm excited today, Tim, and I know you are too because we have a live studio audience behind us and we're welcoming back to Kitchen Studio one of Louisville's longtime favorite chefs. Dallas McGarity has been in charge of the kitchen at restaurants like Volare and Marketplace at Theater Square, and now he's opened his own place in the Highlands called The Fat Lamb. He's revealing the secrets to some of his signature dishes there. And he'll be revealing a lot of his favorite secrets coming up. That's right, Kevin, and I'm going to be revealing the secrets to my bourbon ginger ale. It's delicious. All of that and a lot more, it's Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs in front of this live studio audience, and it starts right now. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. I'm Kevin Harnett, and always inside our home base here at Bourbon Barrel Foods. We're in the Butcher Town Market, and do we have a show for you today. If you're a lover of good food, you've probably tasted some of Dallas McGarity's cooking before, and today you're going to learn how to make some of his favorite dishes that are featured at his new restaurant, The Fat Lamb. He'll show us the secrets to his lamb meatballs. Gotta have lamb at the fat lamb, right? And if you don't like Brussels sprouts, you haven't tried these. They're turning haters into lovers, and we'll show you how you can too. But first, meet my co-host, our CEO, our Chief Entertaining Officer, Tim Lair. Hello, Kevin! Hello, Timmy! Good to see you. Great to see you. What an audience! They're excited! Man. They are and they're yeah. hungry. Hungry. Listen, you know, we've had a chance to do this show for many, many years. Right. There are a number of chefs that we've had come and go and who've been on our show multiple times. And, you know, over the course of time, you grow to really like certain people. And our chef today, I've had a chance to uh, just kind of see grow through the city because we've done the show so long, and I really am a fan. I am a huge fan of this chef. I'll tell you what, he is so phenomenal. And to have his own restaurant is just a treat. So uh, without further ado, Let's we're going to bring it. him on. Here he is. He's been on our show many times. Please welcome Chef Dallas McGarity. All right. All right. Hey, Hello, Good Chef. Good to see you. Good to see you guys. Your own place, buddy. Yeah, yeah. My own place. That's awesome. That is. Yeah. We've I, seen you grow up almost, it seems almost, like. Almost, yeah. It's been many, many, many years and many shows. So, it has yeah, been. Yeah. It, it, but give us a little bit of that about your background before coming to the family. Well, I, I moved to Louisville in 2004, and then I, I kind of worked at Valare for quite a while, about three years. Um, you know, I worked with Josh over there. He was he started up with me. Actually, he you were over Josh at the time, for, right? For so, a little, yeah. yeah. And, and he became the chef there, and it's you know it's pretty cool coming up with Josh. Josh is a good guy. It's fun to work with good people, and yes. there's so many good people in Louisville. You know, after moving here in 2004, I was like, I, I love this city. It's great. You know, I just want to be here. Um, but after that, then I, I worked with Merzad at Z's. That's right. Which is another huge restaurant. Big restaurant. And then I went to Marketplace, and I've been at Marketplace for six years, and that was, you know, insane because it was another big restaurant. But we now I found, I think I found my sweet spot. I, I got about 80 seats in the restaurant, so it's going to be perfect for me. I get to play a little. And, and what a great location you have for the fat lamb. I mean, right Yeah, up, yeah, I love being in a neighborhood. In right Highlands, you know. Up. You've always been willing to share your secrets, and today you're doing the same. Yep. Tell us yep. what we're making. Today we're going to make some Brussels sprouts. We're going to do a little pan roast or roasted Brussels sprouts with some sugared pecans Ooh. and a balsamic honey glaze. So that's kind of, it's going to be neat. Now, what I love about this, yeah. the way Kevin teased it is, even if you don't like Brussels sprouts, you're probably going to love these, right? Exactly. Yeah. So we're going to take haters yeah. and turn them into lovers. Exactly. All right, let's see how we do that. Show <laughs> us right. the secrets of how that happens. All right, Brussels sprouts are, are a little labor intense. They come like this, so, or on a giant stem. That you I was going to say, they, they, yeah, yeah, you can get them that way. Um, but we buy so much. Oh, we yeah. take all day. Um, so each one of these has to be trimmed on the end and cut in half. And when they're fresh like this, I mean, it's really a tight ball of It is, um, it is. Should be very tight, greens. should be very green, very, no brown leaves on the outer, outside of them. And you hear um, the crunch as that knife goes through. And you definitely it. want like, it. It's like little heads of cabbage, you know, it's just fantastic. These are super earthy. Um, that's why when I do Brussels sprouts, I like to add something sweet to them, just because it cuts that earthiness. Oh. So basically we cut them all like this and Put them on sheet pans, and then we take a little oil, just a tiny bit, and just drizzle over to the top, and season it with a little. I use this in the restaurant, salt and pepper mix. It's like oh, I like that. salt, pepper, granulated garlic, and a little crushed red pepper. All in one uh, container. I just makes I, it yeah, easy. I've done it for years. It just kind of helped me a little. It, that way, it know, saves I you like from going here, here, here. You go one <laughs> pinch, you got it all. You know, and we just kind of sprinkle liberally on top. 
and don't be afraid to season these no. in the first run. Um, so then, you basically you take this stuff right here, and you pop it in an oven, and you roast it for, I don't know, about 15 minutes or so on a pretty, pretty high temperature, 400, 425, and just kind of let them cook through. All right. And then what you get whenever you finish is this right here, which is nicely roasted. Oh yeah, you can see the you know nice char, a little char, char on, on there. there, which that's what you want. That's how you want to start with cooking the Brussels sprouts. So you cook them before you cook them, at least in my restaurant, that's how we do it. Um, you easy can eat them so far. Yeah, right? That's pretty yeah. easy so far, right? We can do it, we can do that. So now we're gonna change it up a little. So we <laughs> have a little uh, <laughs> pecans, just regular old pecans. I know some people say pecans. Pecans. I'm from, I'm from South Carolina, so I, think, I say pecans. I think pecans is the proper uh, southern way, right? That's, that's the way my mom said it, my See? grandma, you know. So. And, they, and they would know. And they would know, right? They know southern food, but yeah. I'm not here, so. Um, so I kind of give these a little toast on them. And on that's me. always good for any time you're doing nuts, you want to toast them up, get the oils released. and Exactly. It really changes the complexity it does. of, uh, of it that. It does. It's so an important So what will happen is these will get a little toasty. The oils will start coming out. It'll get some of that bitterness out of them because... Pecans, nuts in general, are bitter, um, so you want to take some of that out so you can add other stuff in because you don't want to put bitter with earthy because then you're going to have a oh. mess. What we're going to do is we're going to add a little sugar to it. And just granulated sugar? Is that just granulated sugar. So, And it gets kind of sticky because you melt the sugar, basically. And so, it's just enough to cover all the yep. pecans. And then you're going to, when you see the smoke, pecans, you basically you add your oil. And the oil kind of loosens everything. Get some still kind of plus it gives it a nice little glaze on top exactly so all this is getting hot god i can smell that it's you almost, can already smell well, yeah. it. it's almost like cotton candy i've you already forgotten that, brussels sugar, sprouts that in sugar? The dish. Yeah. i know right yeah, who wants brussels sprouts when you can eat sugared <laughs> pecans so um never to add the the brussels and that sound is a good sound you want to that's the high heat yeah a lot of people are scared of heat but you have to cook with high heat on something like this because you already cooked the brussels sprouts once you don't want to overcook them. They're kind of al dente right now, and this is going to help them kind of continue that. Yeah, and I think that's one of the secrets because otherwise it'll just steam themselves and not really get that. Exactly. Cooked. And you kind of just want to get this good and hot. So. All right. Oh yeah. And see, it's kind of popping already. And now we're going to take our glaze. Balsamic honey. I like the idea of the uh, reduced balsamic with honey. Right. Yeah. It works really well. It's got the sweetness from the, the honey, but the acid from the balsamic too. So it's kind of got a, it's almost like sweet and sour sauce. You know, ah, that's the way I look at it. So I like that. Um, so now we just glaze. And you'll be able to smell the vinegar and the honey happening. Can you smell it already, right? Oh, I do. Yeah. Oh my gosh. By the way, <laughs> how about those flipping skills? Yeah. That's something. You yeah, you got to learn how to do that before you make these. So. Yeah, especially this. Because your cause stove will be covered in uh, just good, you know, stuff, sticky gooey. mess all over here. Then That's we're gonna it. We're going to plate it. We got to it up. Yeah. I like to serve this in like a, a taller dish so it keeps its heat a little while. Um, um, now, is this just a side, an appetizer? Yeah, or this is, well, we serve this as an appetizer. So, um, but it could be a side, like great for the holidays, that kind of thing. Um, I know a lot of people do like Brussels sprouts for Thanksgiving dinner and whatnot. All right. And, this would be perfect for that. What a great so. dish for uh, holiday meals. Yeah, and that's that's our Brussels sprout. Dish. There it is. Oh my God. Super simple. Fantastic. Awesome. That's one of several dishes coming our way. What are we making next? Next, we're going to do lamb meatballs with house-made or homemade tzatziki sauce oh. and a little gremolato. Ooh, I can't wait. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. You're sharing a cocktail? I have a great cocktail. You're going to love this one. And it includes bourbon. Well, we're going to take a taste nice. of that. Nice. And we are going to have an audience member come and take a taste of these Brussels sprouts just to prove that we can turn haters into lovers. We're coming back with more <laughs> secrets of bluegrass chefs right after this. Great. Awesome. Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. We are learning the secrets once again from one of our favorite chefs, Dallas McGarity from the Fat Lamb. And today he has made Brussels sprouts that he's promised will turn haters into lovers. And I'm here with Tom. Tom, you're from J-Town. It's nice to see you. Thank you very much. Thanks for being a part of our show today. Oh, it's been fun. I want you to take a taste. Let's see how Dallas did. We have the uh, balsamic honey reduction that he put on top along with the toasted pecans. A little bit of sugar. 
It's Never good. Never had a Brussels sprout like that before. Never had a Brussels sprout like that. I think that's what he likes to hear, right? It makes, uh, you know, has it turned a hater into a lover? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good deal. Only if you make them. <laughs> exactly. Well, they seemed easy to do. I think we could almost make those at home, couldn't we? Yeah, probably. Pretty easy. Take that back to your right. table. Enjoy Thanks. it, Tom. Thank you very much. Oh, wow. Appreciate Tom and the rest of our audience being That's here. That's right. It is always fun to share secrets of it is. Louisville's great chefs, which we've done for a number of years. And consequently, in addition to that, we've been sharing your secrets with our audience for a number of years, too, Tim. And, and I can take a bourbon hater and turn them into a lover, too, with this next cocktail. <laughs> yeah. This you, is my uh, bourbon ginger ale. I love this cocktail. Uh, slightly sp spicy, which is wonderful. Anyway, shaker with ice. Okay. I'm going to start out with Old Forester. This is the Old Forester signature, which is, means it's 100 proof, uh, a beautiful, nice, spicy bourbon. Uh, so I, I thought, you know what, ginger will go with that because all the spiciness of this uh, uh, well-aged, right, 100 proof bourbon. So about an ounce and a half. Or, or so. <laughs> yeah, that's, you, like, you, you like my ounce and a half, so yeah, you? like a shaker and a half. <laughs> exactly. And then, about, <laughs> and then about an ounce of uh, ginger syrup, that goes in. That's going to give it that spiciness. Also a little sweet. Now, to that, about four ounces of fresh lemonade goes in. And then a quick dash of bitters. Again, this is going to add a little depth to the cocktail itself. And I'm going to give this a good shake because we want all that syrup to mix in there. So you really need to give it a, just a really good shake, just like that. My favorite sound. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like the Heisman. Pose. It is. <laughs> it's for Tim, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now, I'm gonna pour this uh, over a rocks glass with ice. Finally. It's got a good color. Oh, nice color. I'm gonna garnish this with a little bit of uh, lemon peel. You wanna make sure you squeeze the zest. Get that all the way around. Boom, that goes in. And a lot let's of flavor see in that. How we did zest. with the bourbon ginger aid. I'm going to try Ready? it. Boom. Cheers. Mm. Wow. That's good. No, that is great, Kevin. <laughs> That's more than a wow. Right. Back. I didn't mean to offend you, Tim. It is great. Yeah, okay. We're, We're not gotta, finished cooking. No, we got to bring back Dallas McGarity because he's let's cooking up that. some fun things. Lamb. <laughs> From All the right. fat lamb and lamb meatballs, is this what yeah, I heard? Yeah, we're going to make lamb meatballs, but first we're going to make the sauce that goes with the lamb oh. meatballs. I'm making a tzatziki sauce. Oh. Um, Classic so, uh, yeah, kind of a Greek dish that yeah, goes with lamb the lamb. Lamb tzatziki, they kind of, you know, they mesh well together. So, um, so what I got here is a little strained Greek yogurt. It's pretty thick, as you can see. It's actually super thick. It's called labna. It's basically a yogurt that sits in cheesecloth until there's no more liquid, really, to, to strain out, and it looks like... Almost like a like a sour cream or like a softened cream cheese. Now, can you um, buy that or, or actually? Yeah, can... yeah, you can buy it definitely in the grocery. Um, I, you know, I'll buy it because I use so much of it. Uh, tzatziki <laughs> sauce is traditionally a cucumber sauce with yogurt, and we're gonna take an English cucumber, which I like to keep the peel on. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slice it in half, and then I'm gonna slice it as thin as I can. Um, oh, well, I like you that could knife. you could grate it. But slicing it very thin, I like the texture of little chunks of cucumber in my tzatziki. So little texture. Yeah, yeah. And if I Definitely. did it like that, you'd have little chunks of finger. I was gonna well, say yeah. You know, <laughs> you know. And then you just kind of make it as small as you can, as thin as you can. Um, that's some nice skill, Sarah. Well, Look that way, oh, it's that way too. What will happen is all the liquid that's in this cucumber is gonna come out when you mix in salt because salt will extract oh, the liquid, it it, salt and it'll, it'll out the liquid. make this a little less thick a little less you know pasty um but that's good because you want the you know you want to strain all that liquid out so you have that cucumber flavor all these little tiny pieces of cucumber are going to help make this a little less a little less thick actually so which you wouldn't think you know you got all the stuff to it and you're right. like oh it's going to be even thicker so now another thing that helps is lemon juice the acid in the lemon is going to help break this down a little bit more so one lemon for this should be plenty um, and you want to get all the juice you can out of it. Well, that's a good idea. Make sure you have the strainer so the seeds don't go in there to give it extra crunch. Oh, yeah, like that. yeah, that's happened a time or two. People think they can catch it with their fingers or whatever. No, it never right. works. <laughs> it sounds like somebody's tried so. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the right tool for the right job, guys. So give it a little shake. Make sure you get all Perfect. the juice out of there. Um, and that acid really brings up the dish too. I mean, the, the lemon's not just for the flavor; it actually 
brings up all those other flavors. Another thing I like to add is a tiny bit of minced garlic. Not a ton, just a little. Um, I mean, it's, it's raw, so it's got some spice to it. So you don't want to add a lot. Now we're gonna add a little salt and pepper. With a little garlic with powder. A little garlic powder. <laughs> Granular. You know, what, you know what's great about that is, I mean, it goes on everything. It, it, it works Yeah, perfect. it works perfect, you know, and everyone puts salt and pepper on their food, right? Hopefully. It's at least seasoning, some, right. some, some type of seasoning. And that's just my seasoning. Um, so then you just kind of mix it. I can see how that liquid's coming out a little bit. You see how it's kind of starting yeah. to get a little softer, you know? It kind of becomes a little more... A little thinner. It's not so yeah. thick and coagulated. And for me, this is like, this is the best tzatziki ever. When you get tzatziki like this and you can God, like... It smells so you good. You can I like spread it, you fresh. know? It's just, it's ah. fantastic. Um, so now we're going to make lamb meatballs. Um, <laughs> what we have for the meatballs is ground lamb. I like to keep it super simple. I want the lamb flavor to come through. I want it to be fatty and... And delicious. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dice an onion small, and this is going to go as the main flavoring. It's going to be onion, lamb, a little look at, bit of. Look, a, look at that dice. That is a beautiful dice. I mean, I, that is just gorgeous. That easy. I keep trying this at home, and I. And we can just chop it up. It's not. I know it doesn't have to be a perfect dice. Um, you want some of those bits of onion in there. You know, it kind of helps. Um, perfect. So all this goes inside. The mix, and then we're gonna add a touch more garlic. There's the raw know. garlic. Just raw garlic. It's gonna get cooked though, so you can add a touch more. Oh yeah, don't be afraid. It'll soften yeah. up and it'll get soften nutty. Up inside. Yeah. Um, and then a little more salt and pepper mix. Um, and this is where you want to be kind of generous, because this is gonna cook and gonna because be like, it, it, it'll cook off. Like I mean, yeah, it'll, yeah. So yeah, it'll be a little bit more in inside it. So, um, so now. This is when you get your hands dirty. You just kind of mush, you know? It's my favorite mixing device. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because... It's the most reliable. I know you like mixing stuff and well, getting your I know, hands dirty, get, but, yeah. but don't mix it too much. Okay, just, no, not too yeah. much. Yeah, because if you mix it too much, it'll be tough. And oh. a lot of people get meatballs and they're like really tough and kind of right. chewy and hard to, hard to deal with. Really? So that's if you a mix secret. it too much... Don't over mix. Yeah, if you mix it too much, it'll come out weird and you don't really I've want seen it. those. You don't want weird meatballs. No. <laughs> so... Um, I like to do decent sized meatballs, so on the menu. So we take about, I don't know, about three ounces of meat. Mm -hmm. and, and this would be an entree, or uh... um, no? This will be an appetizer. And these are going to go in the oven. This needs to be about 425, um, 400 around that area. Okay. And it needs to go for about, I'd say, 12 to 18 minutes, depending on your oven. Sure. Um, you want them to be cooked through. But you also want them to have like a little crispy on the outside of them. We're going to take a quick break. Those are going into the oven, but when we come back, we're going to finish the meatballs. And we've got more secrets to share right here on we Secrets do. of Bluegrass Chefs. Don't go away. Welcome back to our kitchen studio. I'm Kevin Harnett alongside Tim Laird, Dallas McGarity from the Fat Lamb. We're cooking and sharing some secrets and we're not finished yet. Now, I see you've pulled the meatballs out of the oven. Yeah, the meatballs are out of the oven and I kind of give them a little pan fry, um, get a nice crispy on the bottom of them. Um, just because all that fat sits on the bottom. Right. So it, it'll oh, develop that's a, good a little idea. bit crisp. So 12 to 14 um, minutes, they come out and yeah, then, uh, yeah. just give them a little And we steak. obviously we make them you know, ahead of time and then we reheat them like this Perfect. in a little, little saute um, with a little oil. So now to plate. What I have here, I got some tzatziki that we made, oh. which is still super creamy and just delicious. And I like to just put a big plop of that on there. Why and kind not? of smear it out just a touch. Oh, I mean, I mean that I mean, texture. Look, I, the that, texture that's the is amazing what makes thing. It. Is this is why you want to make it homemade? Yeah, this is actually why oh. you want to make pretty much tzatziki sauce anywhere because it's going to stay like that. If you buy it, it's going to be runny. And you didn't um, have any of those preservatives or any of those so, other things that uh, you have to when you buy it already at the store, Kevin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let me take our meatballs, which I would usually use tongs for this, but I don't have uh -huh. any. You've got your... But I got my chef you tongs. Get, you got your chef tongs. It's this all-purpose tool you all probably do today. Yeah. It's also we tongs. <laughs> put that on top. <laughs> We've got tongs, a stirrer, a mixer. We can make a baller, a chopper, a mixer. Now this is, this is something we make ahead of time. Oh, and we make and we sit on it and use it and it's just delicious. It's amazing. What is um, it? It's a bunch of herbs that we chop up. This is parsley, rosemary, a little bit of uh, other stuff. Secrets that I can't Secrets get. you can't um, reveal. But this is our grimolata. Um, it has garlic, crushed red pepper, olive oil, lemon oil, a little bit of a salt and pepper mix. 
That's quite, that's quite a well, list of ingredients. Yeah, all kinds of stuff going okay, on. A little Colonel, lemon juice. What's this other secret um, ingredient? What did we leave out? So <laughs> what we do is I, I kind of like to give this a good a good drop on the plate because and it's it, uh, it's gonna it's really herbaceous. With oil? Is that yeah, it's olive? it's olive oil. Yeah. Olive oil infused. And we kind of just oh, nice drizzle color. it on the plate. Looks good. Um, and the next thing we put is a little crumbled feta cheese. Mm, um, very traditional. Yeah, feta and tzatziki and meatballs and oh my gosh, so very Mediterranean, delicious, very Mediterranean. Incredible. I don't know where the southern is in this dish, but it's definitely Mediterranean. Oh. Maybe the maybe the lamb is uh, grown in Virginia. <laughs> Some like raised in Virginia. So, right. um, and then I use a little sumac on top. The sumac is sumac is a berry. It's kind of uh, citrusy, so it adds a lot of pungent citrus flavor <laughs> um, and a little saltiness to it. And that is our meatball dish. Wow! Look at that. That is incredible. Tell, right. it, tell us a little bit more about the fat lamb. I mean, uh, this right. is your endeavor. This yeah. is your baby. Yeah, this is my and, restaurant. So, uh, again, yeah. just give us a little overview um, of the restaurant. Well, we're about an a ADC restaurant in the Highlands um, on Bardstown Road and Grinstead Drive. Um, it's a small little space, but it's a, a lot of big stuff coming out of the kitchen. It's a big open kitchen, so if any of you guys are ever in the restaurant, just say hi. Um, say, hey, I saw you on Secrets. And yeah. I'll be like, oh, great. So, well, we look um, forward to coming and seeing you. So, yeah, good stuff, It's going to be awesome. Good Thanks stuff. for being here Thanks today. Thanks a lot, guys. Alice McGarrity, everybody. Alice. Always a pleasure, thank buddy. You. You're always great. Awesome. We're going to wrap the show up by saying thank you to Dallas, thank you to our audience here, and thank you for watching. For Tim Laird, I'm Kellen Harned. We'll see you next time on the next edition of Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs.